the Brockton Public Library for another series event of Everyone Has a Voice. This is our fourth one. We're closing out the year 2019, and we're truly blessed, and, we think, and I thank those that have come and ready to share their poetry with us in creative, creative writings. And uh, we have a special feature that we're going to feature after open mic, as well as my colleague, Philip Pasaurus, the uh, founder of Everyone Has a Voice, and I would like to respectfully call Mark Lindy up of the Brockton Access Community Local TV Network. So it's Brockton Community Access, and he's the general manager. He doesn't like to be of titles because he's a man of many hats. He's very vibrant, he contributes, and he supports all our community initiatives in the city of Brockton. Such a wonderful friend, colleague, and supporter of Everyone Has a Voice. Mark, can you please come up? So I started out covering this, uh, I don't know, it's going to be maybe a year? Yeah. And I came on Saturday just to do my job, cover the poetry, but I've really gotten into it. Everybody that has brought their voices here and their um, talents here, it's just amazing. Someday I'll get the courage to come up here myself and do poetry. I teach public speaking at Massasoit. So I can talk, but um, <laughs> in school I was kind of forced to do poetry. Okay, and, and and you know when you get forced to do anything, you don't really necessarily like it as much. But when you hear it, and the the young folks that do it, um, the folks my age and older, I just bring something out. So we're happy to present it on cable TV for for Brockton residents, and then we also have it on our YouTube channels. The Brockton channel. So if you don't live in Brockton, you can see it there or if you don't have cable TV. So I'm just happy to be here and uh, normally I'm on that side of the camera, so I'm just going to go right back. Thank you. <laughs> Tis the season to be jolly. It is a holiday season. We are coming up with um, the Christmas holidays coming up. And with that being said, I would also like to respectfully ask Paul Engel, who's the director of the Brockton Public Library, to come forward, share some words, <laughs> some holidays, some share, some jolliness, and um, soon he'll be having a poem for 2020. That will be on his agenda. Paul, welcome. Hi, everybody. Thanks for uh, coming here to the event today. Hello. It's great. I'm starting to see people, you know, regulars coming in, and it's wonderful. Um, I don't really know what to say other than uh, it's cold outside, and <laughs> art warms the heart. So I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say today. You won't be getting a poem out of me in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe I'll pass out CDs later or something like that. Um, anyway, welcome to the library. We are, we're glad to have you here. Thank you. With that being said, I will take that challenge, Paul. <laughs> and yes, um, one of our regulars who I'm going to get ready to introduce, she's very graceful, she's pleasant, and she's very supportive of the poetry, even to our Voices of Diversity's annual event she attended. So right now, I, we're going to begin the poetry series because I'm ready to hear some beautiful words, some articulated words, and Sheila has been a known poet of us that has come and joined us for Everyone Has a Voice. She's always reading some beautiful poems. I'm going to call on her for you to come and begin and do the kickoff and read your poem. Thank you, Ellie. This is the summer, the winter solstice. And um, I'm reading a poem about when all the stars aligned 2,000 years ago, my Christmas poem. <coughs> and so even as Balaam had foretold that a star would advance from Jacob's blood, a regal star appeared in the east and rested in Ares the Lamb. From the height of their ziggurats, the Magi were attentive to the night, as Jupiter aligned with Saturn and were attendants on the rising sun. Jupiter in the east augured the birth of a king with great powers bestowed by Saturn, 
and the wise men traveled in caravans across vast deserts in search of this child. With them, packed in camel bags, were pieces of royal gold, a carved box with white tears of frankincense, kindled by priests to waft prayers to heaven, and prophetic of their gifts, resin from the camaphora tree, dark red crystals of fragrant myrrh, long used to sweeten a burial shroud. Part two. Light from the star unspools in brilliant lines into Bethlehem. Three huddled shadows cling to a stable wall full of moonlight. Their small warmth a mere exhalation of red embers and thin trace of smoke that changes direction with each breath of the donkey and sheep beyond. The child is cradled in Mary's arms, his body like a warmed stone against her breast. With her finger, she traces the small valley between his thumb and forefinger, his nails no bigger than the eye of a sparrow. The clean white wrap she wove for him glows as if fibers have absorbed all light from fire and moon. Mary's hair loosens and spills in dark wine threads around her, Jesus, her soft lullaby, a prayer. Joseph startles when the weary magi enter, so filled is he with this sacred moment. They lay their gifts upon the dark earth embroidered with scattered straw and gaze in wonder that the new king sleeps here, born to this humble family, bathed in the scent of burnt olive branches. Thank you, Sheila. That was very graceful and pleasant. And at this time, we also like to promote our youth, our youth with their creativity and their forms of expression, because it's always, this is a great way to hear their voices. With this being said, it is my pleasure to call upon Gabrielle Valentin to come and share your poetry. All right, this thing is a little more freestyle. It's called, Where We Go Next. Where do I go next? Hey, my mind is brainless, thoughts of greatness with changes ahead. But I'm thinking here, just laying in bed. What if I hit the hard times? What if there's something stuck in my mind, trying to unwind? Y'all know what I really, really want, peace. Let the damn fire cease, let others in yourself be. We know what to achieve, now it's time to relieve all the greatness that lies way down deep inside ya. Just go on and create, there's no need to hesitate. Sometimes I used to think my thoughts went nowhere, but we're all going somewhere. Whenever I look around and hear the clashing sounds, I hear them harmonize, see folks trying to equalize. Where do I go next? It's where the best voice leads me, succeeds me, and feeds me with what I need for life, love, and happiness. Where I, I know I'll be my best when I help create a world where people unite and think before they fight. It's where I'll go next, where we should go next, boy. <laughs> Thank you. I felt the enthusiasm with that. That was very nice and very powerful. And I encourage you to continue on because this is only the beginning. And right now, I'm going to continue to move forward. We have another one of our poets that is a regular that has come and comes regularly here. And um, Beverly also has writings that she does, and she has a book in, with some of her poetries that she shares. At this time, I'm going to call Beverly to come and to share. And Beverly, happy holidays. Welcome you, and I thank you for being a regular and a supporter of Everyone Has a Voice. Welcome. Thank you all so much. It's a pleasure to be here. And this is my book, written by me, of course. And it's up there at the Brockton Library. Um, upstairs, you guys can get a copy if you like. Um, 
maybe three poems I'm gonna share with you all really quick. This one is called The Sweet Aroma of Tomorrow. I don't want any coffee, I don't want any tea. As a matter of fact, don't even bother me. Okay, wait, let's turn this around. There's a better attitude that I have found. The scent of lavender floats through the air. I feel a little bit better, because now I care. I think of things that I never thought of, like the soft feeling of the wings on a dove. The smell of warm brownies beginning to bake. The sparkle of diamonds that you know are not fake. So before you let yourself get all depressed, Get up, open the shades, and start to get dressed. Never let a day begin with so much anger or sorrow. Keep smiling today for a better tomorrow. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple more for y'all. They're really short. Thank you all so much. Um, this one is called I Dream, and I do have a calendar to go with this. It's a picture, and it's wonderful. Okay, I dream of the sun, the moon, and stars. City lights and fancy cars, hot buttered popcorn at driving theaters, then I dream of something even greater. A world without pain, hunger, or disease, where you always hear thank you and please. Families of all sizes, shapes, and colors, always supportive and helping each other. So just sit back and don't worry what it means. Just remember, it is okay to dream. <laughs> okay. Um, this is gonna be the last one, and sometimes I do a little thing with my friends when I'm bored. So they gave me these words, and I was supposed to come up with a poem. Okay, I'm gonna tell y'all real quick. The words are Bethlehem, Eggnog, Mistletoe, Tracing, Collard Greens, Seal, and Dominic. Okay, it's called um, Bethlehem. The place is Bethlehem, and the weather is quite nice. I just spread some eggnog with a little bit of spice. There was not much mistletoe to be found in this land, and we had just made some turkeys by tracing our hands. Now I have to finish up, because I have to make my collard greens, and I hear there's a sale on plasma TVs. Well, not, well, let's not forget about Dominic, who fell asleep in his chair while he was hoping and praying he didn't get gray hairs. But this is not about mistletoe or sculptures in the sand. It's about you helping out and doing what you can. Well, I thank you all for listening. Since I have so much to say, I hope you have a great Christmas and a healthy New Year's Day. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So because we're closing out 2020, I've had a series of haikus that I also did the shortcut version of poetry. Because if anyone knows about haikus, it's a five, seven, five syllables. And that's the easiest way out for poetry. <laughs> then it's a good way to begin your journey of poetry. So what I did respectfully, because my fiance, he's from the Dominican Republic, I am mixed. I am a Salvadorian Dominican born here in America. As you know, it's, this is the product that comes to our country. People like myself and others are born, and this is diversity. And um, respectfully to the language, I am bilingual, English and Spanish. And I would, um, I'm going to close out with my haikus of 2019, because these are the, the same ones I've read a couple of times, but in closing, I'm going to translate them so that he can understand and know my, the poetry that is being read. It's different when you hear um, a language and, and you get the common sentences, but when you begin to go into the arch and a little deep, deep in part of it, it's important to, to articulate it, and that's why Voices of Diversity was a blessing. We had a ver various series of poets that um, from Asian, from Haiti, from um, Germany, various poets that came and spoke in their languages, and that was so important because we have to embrace diversity and culture, and we have to respect multi-languages in our community, and that is the beauty of City of Brockton. So, ahora, I am going. That means now, <laughs> my fiance's name is Manuel. Ahora, Manuel, yo cogí un momento porque las poemas que nosotros decimos somos en inglés. Para respeto a ti, haciendo mi prometido. Yo te voy a, a, a traducir uno de los poemas que yo le trae durante los temas cuando yo estuve leyendo los lo, lo poemas. So, una que yo le trae en inglés, lo voy a hacer bilingüe en español, pero ahora lo voy a leer en inglés y después lo voy a leer en español. So, I just let him know that these are the series of poems, as I stated to you, that I'm going to first read in English, and then the exact poem I'm going to read in Spanish. So, I'm just doing two haikus. So, and haiku, I'm going to explain to him what the haiku is. 
el haiku son poemas de tres líneas, con cinco sílabas la primera, siete la segunda y cinco la tercera. Sí, es el más poema que más corto. Tú sabes, mi vida muy rápido. Yo necesito poemas que están cortos. Yeah. I said, you know, my life is too much. It's very busy. I need shortcut poems. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, my first haiku that I've written for Everyone Has a Voice series is very simple. It's every spoken word unveils the mask of our city. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. Clear cut, simple. Okay. Ahora, now, in Spanish. Cada palabra hablada desvela la máscara de nuestra ciudad. Invierno, primavera, verano y el otoño. Es el primero. <laughs> Alrighty, so now I'm going to my second haiku and I'm going to say my third haiku for intermission and then closing because we are celebrating our engagement today. There's an after party tonight, International Night, I will share it to you, <laughs> right here in Brockton. But I am actually, I wrote a love poem for my fiance. Aww. I'm articulate, I'm different. Vows does not have to be in, during the midst of a wedding, it could be at any point in time. And the beauty of being here live, and everyone has a voice, you can bring what you desire and want to the table. And this is what I desire because I'm with my beloved community. So the second haiku is, um, here it is, el segundo. We are the movement, voices the force of nature. Sun up, sun down, dusk. Ahora en español. Somos el movimiento, voces la fuerza de la naturaleza. Sol arriba, sol abajo, a conocer. Ya. Yeah. Oh, that's it. <laughs> All righty, thank you. Um, and um, now we would like to continue with our open mic. And at this point of time, I would love to hear and share Everyone Has a Voice series of poems with Elaine Hapney to share your poetry with us. Hi, everyone. It's very nice to be here. Uh, speaking of ancestry, I have a rich family ancestry here in Brockton. My grandfather, who was an immigrant from Italy, was, uh, did a lot of murals here in Brockton, uh, restored statues in public schools, and also another ancestor of mine, um, uh, Castano, his portrait is downstairs. He was a very well-known artist, too. So that's my, my family name is Croce. Um, I had a couple of poems that were published um, in uh, the um, fall journal, uh, UMass Boston. So I'll read them. <laughs> the Red Line. I rode the Red Line today with the zombies. You know them. They bask in the glow or the light on the screen. Technology buried people, caught by the genie in the lamp, seducing them into its flickering glow. You know them. They no longer use their lips to speak or to kiss. They only use their fingertips. Will they ever awaken? Will they ever learn to think? Or is life just a cold plastic eye and the blue light of the screen? <laughs> The next one is Wall Street Beat. Buy, buy, sell to the tune of a silver bell. Wall Street runs on greed. You need money to succeed. Never be downbeat, you'll be obsolete. Massive outsized Wall Street pay. Bet on mortgage all the way. Real estate, speculate, rising rents, live in tents to the tune of a silver bell. Bea Stearns on the run. Bernie Madoff has so much fun. Oh, the dollar falling fast. Then GM took all our cash. Banksters ripping at our lives. Lies disguised by corporate ties. Avarice and greed, an evil seed. Buy, buy, sell to the tune of the silver bell. <laughs>
Thank you. Yes, we know Wall Street. <laughs> the money market. Well, we're going to continue going forward. We're getting close to our special features, but we still have open mic going on. And I have my final haiku because I'm going to save an actual poem for after the open mic. Here is the third one, el tercero, el último de la haiku. Your eyes, my eyes, watch. Fly around soaring eagles, north, south, east, and west. Traducir. Tus ojos, mis ojos, miran. Volar alrededor de las águilas, norte, sur, este y ese, diferente parte de las países. Alrighty, and now I see a special person that has walked in, that she is part of Open Mic. She is a beloved dear sister and friend in the community, and I'm going to get ready to prepare to call her up front, and I look forward for her poetry that she shares. My beloved sister in community and in faith, Trish, can you please come up and share your poetry? seasons and um, this one I wrote on Thanksgiving it's called a grateful heart there's so much to be grateful for life with its twists and turns many experiences thrills others leave scars and burns on a road of discovery of who I am in life the vision is blurry filled with confusion and strife not saying all of my choices have been in vain, but many of them were and left me in writhing pain. You go to the wrong people for comfort and advice that have you going for more. They're in no way helpful, their intentions far from concise. But read more into it, and then you let the, them hurt you to the core. We want to be grateful. It doesn't seem like we're fighting, but we're definitely in a war. When you value people who take from you, there's only so much that you can forgive, no matter what they say or do. Makes you wonder, are there any good people left on the earth? Yes, but there are many who are self-seeking and try to diminish your worth. I've come to realize the ones who stand out or make their efforts shown. They have suffered much and battle insecurities of their own. What is this illusion called the innocence of youth? Only in our blind beliefs can we truly find the truth. No more lives to be torn apart. Can time heal a broken heart? We will get to see Will we get to see the right winning for a change? It's the reality of it all has levels of depth, width, and range. A miracle can happen when you give a hug or share a smile. It can be subtle at times, but it lasts with people for quite a while. No one can prepare you for what happens next, but take it in stride. People are sad and lonely. Many want to crawl under a rock and hide. But a grateful heart can turn that around and quick, no longer sitting in despair of sadness that makes one sick. You bring all you have to a weary world and find many are waiting for someone just to be gentle and kind. To engage in mindless chatter seems minute, but to others, it's all that matters. You made someone's day and not even know it. There's nothing better. Your heartstrings will show it. You don't think you have much, but offer it. Behold, the results are priceless. It's worth its weight in gold. You invested in people, and it's the best investment to make. 
The dividends are endless, so cash in all you can take. Don't ride through life with windows rolled up, never feeling the wind on your skin. Some things are worth doing, and it heals you from within. When you value someone worth your while, you feel it in your soul. The goodwill to others is the ultimate goal. So do it often and do it today. Some have little time left, so don't delay. You're making the world a better place, person to person, leaving a trace of yourself, a trail of kindness in another's heart. It's the season, no better time than now to start. This one is called Christmas Humbug to Christmas Hope. I'm hearing joyous Christmas bells ringing, but sadly my heart doesn't feel like singing. Some people's hearts are full of cheer. It's supposed to be a special time of year. But I can fake it, no matter how I try. It ends the same way, I break down and cry. You gave promises of love and commitment, I've heard them all before. They're met with nothing but disaster, so I'm running for the door. It's tough when people you love fail. Your heart fills with great expectation. Your mind is vexed with torture beyond interpretation. When you go against your better judgment, you get hurt beyond your control. You have the rug pulled out from under you. You feel it in your soul. As children, we believe the best thing to see is someone holding you tenderly. But you grow up without, hearts full of doubt, nothing to rely on, just a faded memory. My mind is reeling, this Christmasless feeling makes me want to say humbug, as Scrooge would say. But it's hard to lose my heart full of joy in this world, full of chaos and misery. When it seemed that the magic slipped away, I became broken, I fell to my knees, and began to pray. Believe in what your heart is saying. Hear the melody that is playing. There's no need to run away. Let God's words of truth be your guide. It's difficult to get his best when you feel the worst. It's a terrible place to be. Will I ever move on from the past or continue to repeat my current history? I want to be free of all the hurt and pain. Holding on to this sadness, what will I gain? There's people that, sorry, people can only provide a small level of security and stability in this world. There's only one who can truly satisfy us, and he's near, so behold. I now have a song in my heart, a cheerful voice in my head. This humbug is over, I have nothing to dread. For seasons they come and they go, some with heat, others with snow. Some got me having feelings that are feeling mighty fine. A journey through Christmas, it's like a good wine. Gets better with age, so come along, have your eyes open wide. People are what matter, so part with your foolish pride. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, say it with pure delight. It remains with me now for more than just one night. When you let go of the pain and follow your heart, it's easy to begin each day new, a brand new start. Forgiveness is easy unless it's for yourself, you see. Carrying burdens is an unfortunate part of us and keeps us in misery. Just get over that you're not perfect and that you can easily fall. Being loved and accepted is the greatest gift of all. Do this thing, a Christ, see a Christmas miracle unfold. When you cherish life as a gift, it's worth so much more than you could ever hold. None of us to promise tomorrow to think of this fills me with sorrow. There can be hope in the midst of loss, you must believe. The one who's greater than he lives within me, and I do receive. The Christ in Christmas is what I'm talking about, gives us something to look forward to, removes all doubt. Be the smile that warms someone's lonely heart. There's so many waiting, 
So just go out there and start. Remember, Christ is the child sleeping in the night. He has brought us goodness and light, and it is very bright. And this poem is not mine. It's from Elizabeth Bishop, and it's called One Art. And um, I just think it's very um, suiting for the season. The art of losing isn't hard to master. So many things seem filled with the intent to be lost, that their loss is no disaster. Lose something every day, except the fluster of lost door keys or the hour badly spent. The hour of losing isn't hard to master. Then practice losing father, losing faster, places and names where it was meant to travel. None of these will bring disaster. I lost my mom's watch and look, my last or next to last of three loved houses went. The art of losing isn't hard to master. I lost two cities, lovely ones, and vaster, some realms I owned, two rivers, a continent. I missed them, but it wasn't a disaster. Even losing you, joking voice, gestures that I love, I shan't have lied. It's evident, the art of losing's not too hard to master, though it may look like, and you could write it as a disaster. And the last one is just my little, cheerful, little kindness reality checklist. Number one, how do I relate to others? Number two, have I asked for forgiveness? Number three, have I freely forgiven? Number four, am I holding on to grudges? Number five, have I caused anyone to hold a grudge against me? Number six, am I jealous or full of envy? Number seven, do I act justified in my actions? Number eight, do I only see my point of view? Number nine, am I critical versus kind? And number 10, am I making myself a priority over people? Thank you. Mm. This last thing, for anyone that's seeming down, um, even though I've made mistakes in the past, I'm still a good person, so. Thank you guys. Thank you. It's always uh, beautiful to hear inspiring words. And uh, because it's very important to be encouraged, to be motivated, but to know that life is more than just the natural elements, the spirituality, faith, and uh, definitely sharing encouraging words because we don't know what each other goes through. We don't know what, what's going to happen when you leave here or if you're actually looking jolly, pleasant, and humble, but you're actually struggling inside. So being able to listen to and hear poems and poetry with such great emphasis and inspiration is such a beautiful dynamic. So at this time, it's, it is my pleasure to introduce my colleague, the founder of Everyone Has a Voice, Philip Hesaurus. Welcome. Can we show our appreciation for Alex? <laughs> so uh, this poem, I'm about to read is a double dedication poem. Um, it's dedicated to Mark Lindy and Ali and Manuel. Um, so this poem was inspired by the library. And I know Mark, when he was in high school, worked here and I heard the stories about how, you know, the Dewey Decimal and all that. And, and it was one of the happiest times of his life that when he worked at the library. And um, I remember walking through the aisles of books and the first three lines just kind of jumped out at me. And I took those three lines and went home and wrote this poem. And the reason it's dedicated to Allie and Manuel because it was written in the library, so it became a love poem. So it's called Portals of Dusted Pages. I read to you in whispers. You lean against words, portals of dusted pages, this craving. Encircled by images of candle flicker, 
Farewell breath on winter's window. Essence lingers. Shadow walls. Dickinson. Browning. Desire echoes connecting time passages. Here, in this moment, their voices stir emotions within me. I give to you heart red flow on yellow parchment. Blood beats quicken Byron Gibran, pounding quiet serenity. We savor words, inhaling the air that surrounds us, grasping at bits and pieces of syllables. Keats and Shelley form round our lips. We taste offerings dipped in mother tongue. Long stemmed flutes elicit remembrance. Touch. Fingers ease unhinged, sensual rise. You, my poem, wrap around silken threads of feather, feather quill. Whisper brushed air, faint traces wash over me. Fingers outline lips softened with your kiss. I call to you, beloved. Eyes caress. Ghost lovers give courage, give heart. My heart flows into red parchment, this craving within, between pages, a kiss, a simple touch, a gentle heart, portals of dusted pages. <clears throat> So I get to read this poem uh, once a year, and it's my Christmas poem. Mm -hmm. And I wrote this uh, the day after Christmas, after one of those huge um, projects of a toy came, and I had, we had to assemble it. I remember being up to like 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, but now I have three grandchildren, and I get to watch my girls <laughs> put their toys together. So this is, um, this is called Christmas Morning, Easy to Assemble. December moon sifts through the cold, children wrapped in dreams. Coffee nestles in the kitchen, carols roam the corners, clock talks, hurry, hurry. Silent figure kneels before the fireplace adorned with overflowing wishes, mouthing prayers of the ages. Easy to assemble. Place A into D, only if K is at right angle. Slide F through J facing G. Force bolt through bracket, then screw U into E equals MC squared, <laughs> folding Y. Slide ruler, table knife, Phillips screwdriver, hydraulic drill, tank hammer, smash thumb, bottle of scotch, and now you're speaking in tongues. Eyes burst open as covers are thrown across the room without touching the floor. Feet streak with wild abandon. Voices blare. He was here. He was here. Scenes from a postcard. Turns into a tornado, whirling, leaving nothing untouched. News at 11. You sit in your chair, eyes half open, holding five hoozy whatsits, four thingamajigs, three doohickeys, two whatchamacallits, and a smile to last the whole day. Thank you, Philip, for the dedicated poem and for the holiday poem. Definitely tickled our souls. It was very pleasant and jolly. Now, we're going forward with our feature. 
again, I love to promote, support, and encourage our beautiful young aspiring poets and already aspired poets. And I'm going to introduce a young lady who's here to read her poetry and uh, to welcome her to Everyone Has a Voice and to share. And I'm going to briefly share a little bit of who she is. Nicole Rochi is a sophomore at UMass Lowell. As a child, she loved to write. She did not take writing seriously until the end of the middle school and on to high school. That's when you know that you really have to pay attention and you have a future, you have bills coming, and you need to graduate and get a degree. So you have to take writing seriously. Yeah. Essays are what's needed to get your A's. And the feeling she received writing her own original work and performing, it was feeling Nicole will never forget. Because she realized that she has power in her writings through her words and her speech and the way that the energy transcends and reciprocates. It's amazing, isn't it? Yes. Her years at Brockton High, where she fine-tuned her poetry, and now at UMass Lowell. That love is still there, very much there. And this is one of the things that we like to promote in the city of Brockton, Brockton Public Library. All aspects of Brockton is to the continuity to support our youth who branch off. Her studying here at Brockton High School must have been intense because it's a very highly populated school. Being able to focus to write, that's even impeccable and amazing, and I congratulate you. But journeying on to go to one of our nice college, state colleges, that's even amazing that you continue. So I continue to encourage you, Nicole. And at this time, I'm going to sum up because I would like for herself to share a bit of her. So Nicole performs at an open mic constantly, started her own poetry club, and has chosen English as her major. Nicole is thankful to be here today and hopes that her voice will inspire others. Thank you for being a leader in the poetry and writing, but a prosperous leader will be amazing as you reach your destiny in the latter years. But now welcome and share that poetry you have. Hi guys, how are you today? Um, before I start, I just wanted to say a couple of things. Um, when I was a senior in high school, the library had a competition here, and um, I was one of the poets that could be involved with it, but I actually got up first because I was so nervous I couldn't even finish any of my poems. But at the end of it, I went up to Philip, and that's kind of where we met, and kind of from there, we've kind of just been talking a lot. He's inviting me to a lot of events, and he's kind of been taking me under his wing, and I just wanted to say I really appreciate that, because without him, I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> Um, I'm going to start with a few of my very, very old ones, like from high school when I kind of first started taking writing seriously, and then kind of some from college and what I've been working on now. This first one's called Love. A noun that moves mountains, increase earthquakes. An adjective with so much beauty and grace, but so much pain and horror. A verb that'll send chills up your spine and put butterflies in your stomach, but give you enough tears to fill an ocean. Why do we crave love? Is it the feeling of ecstasy that it gives us? The feeling to be wanted, needed, desired, to be loved? When we are in love, we are soaring with the beautiful view. A sky as clear as your feelings, a river as full as your hearts, and a sun as bright as your future. Naive to the fact that the view blurs, the feelings fade and we crash. The sky becomes fogged as much as his feelings, the river forms waves that cut as much as his words, and the sun fades as much as the hope that was once bright between the two of you. Then we are left with the feeling of being hurt, abandoned, disregarded, to be meaningless. That is heartbreak. A verb that'll make you forget who you are and sacrifice everything. An adjective that'll tear you apart from the inside. A noun that drags you into the dark. A word much stronger than love. But we forget that for a set of charming eyes, a captivating smile, and the craving to be in love. This next one, I wrote um, a piece here. Um, it was actually for a project that we did with Philip. Um, what is it called again? I forgot. The one where we, um, paint, people had paintings and then we, yeah, so I'm without limits. Sorry about that. But um, I wrote a piece based off of one of the paintings I received. Um, it's called, The Right Love is Hard to Find, but Feels Like a Teddy Bear When You Find It. <laughs> 
At times, love can be a monster from your childhood. It can knock you down, allow you to lose your voice, and make you feel as if you are too weak to get up on your own. It can cause you to fear the future, hide in the darkness because you fear what the light will bring, and make you afraid of company. It'll drain all hope from you, invoke the feeling that you aren't enough, and make you believe you will never be enough. That is not love. That is heartbreak. Love is like a teddy bear from your childhood. It can pick you up, bring your voice back to you, and make you feel like you can do anything. It can bring your bravery back with a hug, assure that it's okay to go to the light, and make you aware that help is needed sometimes. It restores your hope, produces the feeling that you are enough, and make you want to never let go. So when I say love can be a monster, I mean the wrong kind. When you have the right kind, it'll feel like a teddy bear from your childhood. Um, this next one's called To Have and To Hold. I find myself staring at your hand, desiring it to clash into mine, to touch your soft outer layer so I can see your rough inner one, hold and never let go again. I find myself glancing at your lips, desiring to grip mine against yours, to taste the words that you used to tell me, lock into and never unlock again. I find myself memorized by your body, to feel your heartbeat next to mine so I may match it with yours, feel the chaos from the world settle as you hold me closer to embrace and never push away again. I see myself wanting you, holding you, kissing you, having your arms around me, to have and hold and never let go again. Thank you. Um, this one's untitled, but we kind of had to describe something and compare it to ourselves, so I chose a city. How can you describe her? The woman inside me. Simply, she's like a city. Where dim lights are found on every street corner, they used to shine a beautiful hue, but over time they become weary, dull, and tired. So they stand tall, lighting up the darkness with the small amount of light they have left. Where it's busiest at night, there's a drummer who keeps the beat on the street loud and present so that every person can hear a prominent and loud brain bang every second, every minute, every hour to serve as a reminder that it isn't light out yet. There are people who walk with the click of their heels and tired feet. They have not stopped walking all night. They crave to stop and it grows every step but they march and click and walk. The outside parts of the city are cold and frigid like her broken heart. Cheater Boulevard, Liar Avenue, and Heartbreak Road can make you see breath if you go down far enough. But the middle has a beautiful plaza. It only opens so often. When it does, it warms the whole town like her smile. It brings words to life, which brings life back to life. Music to soothe those tired of walking. And for that small period of time, the town is contempt. But the city always returns to its dark roots. So in that case, she is a city, the woman inside me. Uh, so the next few poems I have are kind of from when I started writing last year in college and stuff, and I think they're a little bit different. As you can see, a lot of my poems from high school are kind of love-based because that's really the most powerful thing I had, like emotion-wise, but I've kind of come to learn that there's a lot more stuff in life that's beautiful besides love as well. I still have that part of me, but I also have other stuff too. <laughs> oh, sunset. With your raspberry-colored sky, Mixed with hues of orange sherbet and blueberry bliss, I adore you so much. When your bright orb slowly drags to meet the tip of the water and your reflection enhances the crystals, I adore you so much. The clouds make cotton candy. The hills look like it was a candy land hill. I adore you so much. When you drip fully into the ocean, your colors fade away and you are placed with the moon. I smile softly as I wait for us to meet again. This one's called A Search of Self-Discovery. These words pulled out of my mouth are not a cry for attention. They're a weep to understand her. She builds a fire so she can burn out, turn stone cold to beg others to warm her. Gravitates towards people so she can push herself away, figures out how to make a bomb to self-destruct. That's not the worst of it. She fears the unknown as much as failure, so when she says her biggest fear is the unknown, take it as a double-edged sword. 
Her mind speaks a language you can't understand. Even Rosetta Stone can't translate overthinking. She will give you a map so you can see each part of her, then rip it when you try to look at it from a different angle, give you a history book called My Life, then say you don't understand after reading the first page. Will tell you how to get to your heart to find a road close sign once you arrive. She will chase you until her feet become numb, risk them falling off as long as you catch her and still wonders why she gets hurt constantly. She allows others unworthy to steal her heart, but hesitates when someone asks permission to help keep it safe. Wants to love herself, but always searches for validation within other people, desires to stop being insecure, yet turns herself away from those telling her she is enough. Searches for improvement, not realizing only thing to be improved is herself. If I do not understand her, I cannot expect you to. Therefore, these words I pulled out from my mouth are not a cry for attention. They are weep to understand me. This next one's untitled. I sat with my voice locked into my mouth. Every time I talked, someone's opinion slammed the door on me. With my head buried into my chest, because every time I looked up, my insecurities put me down. I am staring at my heart that is blue, shambled, cradled in my hands that was once a pumping red, a bright red. A burning red, I slumped for so long my feet became numb because regret wouldn't let me move forward. But I was tired of looking at a glimpse of light through a keyhole, staring at a wooden floor with a cramped neck, grasping onto my heart, begging someone to fix me, not realizing I could fix myself. Echoing, save me, save me from this, save me from this mess. Then it hit me. I do not need the approval of others to stand up. I hold the key to my mouth and the power to make people listen. Every acting force has an equal and opposite reacting force. If words are the acting force, allow pushing my head up to be the reacting force. I will use the glue I searched in the dark for called strength and mix the colors that run through my veins. Release a torrent of emotions. Feel that wave of purple, a dark purple a deep purple, and pump my own heart back to life. I will rise from the numbness slowly, get my strength back, walk across that floor, and make myself known. Mm. Um, after my first year of college, I was kind of bittersweet about it because it was a really great experience for me. So I kind of wrote a cute little poem about it, the good and bad parts about it. <laughs> It's called UMass for Sickness and in Health. <laughs> when it comes time to condense my room into boxes, for my hand to let go of the heavy wooden door, to return my keys to their real home and leave the building for the rest of the sweaterless months, I will remember the marijuana misted halls, desert kiss, kiss rooms, laundry machines with two statuses, broken or in use, and nights staying up way past deadlines. I will remember the laughs that drowned my room every Friday, the milkshakes we could never last through the movie, staying to finish our coffee until they kick us out, and being consumed by the sunset over a river every chance I get. <laughs> last semester, I took a Poetry One, which is a really cool course for me, because um, I do love free verse and spoken word, but it allowed me to learn about different poets and different structures, so I decided this one would be a sonnet. It's called Mother, I Adore You. Except when you compared my loves to drugs, except when you implied my love's a crime. Perhaps this is all swept under the rug, but I don't think we should do it this time. You yelled at me when my, pain, when my painted wrist you saw. You said I wanted to follow my peers. I simply just needed a place to draw the pain inside. My mind was filled with fear. When I told you my heart's a different way, mother, you tried to drag me down your path. I can't and won't go even if you pray. I'm sorry I don't have the faith you have. I know you still love me with all your heart, but you're the reason mine fell apart. Wow. This one's called The Only Accepted Felon. You contaminated her skin with your drunken hands, flooded her with your alcoholic breath, when she told you to fuck off, you insisted you loved her. My mother always said I should forgive you and your drunkenness, but I refused to allow drunken coded excuses to be used of sorry filled rapists. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Um, this one's called How Our Love Felt, the structure of it's based off of a prose poem. Our first date was a coil of emotions. Our adventure around the city gave me excitement, saturated goosebumps. The trip to the market led to our first kiss, where those goosebumps turned into enamor-infested hives. When we finally got the rhythm down, our lips together felt freeing. When your eyes squinted above your stretched smile, it arose a grin in me. My love, you were everything to me. Little did I know, this made our last date more painful. When I told you I loved you, our hearts melted into one cluster. The dark car shouted your hand on my thigh as those words hovered out of your lips. Eventually, you stopped saying it back. The cluster turned into solid ice. My love, you are no longer my love. I no longer made a coil in your stomach or gave you goosebumps. For someone who loved me then unloved me, how does it feel to be free? Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is a poem titled Self-Reflection. My fingers graze the glass. It's cold to the touch, yet my heat transfers to it. I walk beside it, tracing until a wooden border is felt. My eyes twitch, twitch to the sound of a bell. A fog that once saturated my eyes has now been lifted. There is a woman in front of me. She sways the way I do. Her hands move as mine, we touch with the glass wall. I thought my curiosity would surpass hers. I push on the glass with both of my hands. We both exclaim, who are you? Before I could know, the fog submerges, the bell rings, and I'm in the dark once again. Thank you. Um, so this is gonna be um, my last poem. Uh, it's kind of interesting, I chose this to do this one last because it's one of my more recent ones, but it's also very similar to my first. Because I've been trying to explore different topics in poetry, but at the same time, I do have a little bit of bias towards love poems. So this one um, is titled A Novel by Nicholas Sparks. The last time I saw you, the rain held truth that raspberry night. If I knew it was the last time our bodies collided, I wouldn't have pushed you over. I would pull you as close as our heartbeats allowed, and that moment did it beat for me. If I knew that afternoon would be our last, our kisses would surpass the rain, my head would stay tucked into your studded cheeks, your hands gorilla glued to my hips, my arms caught behind your neck, our lips trapped in the moment. Would that have made you stay? You wouldn't have left the parking lot. Do you realize our first kiss was in that car? Despite the different paths they were on, our lips found their way perfectly synced in time. Our vulnerability surfaced in that car with smoke-filled lungs touching, tongues speaking for our brains, minds connecting had all felt so easy with you in that car. The moment I knew I loved you on our way back from the train, your voice easing me into a thought I didn't need to hold back. Was that the moment you knew you didn't love me too? I wish I told you I loved the way you folded your socks and set them aside before tangling your feet around mine, the way you locked your car multiple times, how you always paused to take your glasses off first, the way you hated to see me get hurt, how you got to me singing to Queen and J. Cole, the way you said Nicole, the feeling I got being around you, my mouth numb from smiling, heart shaking with anticipation, body warm with security, eyes saturated in love. Did you ever feel that way about me? These moments never existed. I told you to move over. We walked to your car. Our mouths met for the last time. I watched you drive off. Do you regret it? I do. In an alternate universe, she has you still. I call her the lucky one. Thank you. That was beautiful, very heartfelt. And, um, I want to take a moment as we're closing. I am going to do. Uh, I'm going to close on two se on on two segments. And uh, one, I want to continue to embrace the teens right now because um, it's most important. It was very heartfelt to articulate words. I struggled with writer's blocks when I was in college and in my earlier years. Uh, it's hard 
because when you're a teenager, we have like high rates of teen suicide, of depression, and things that a lot of teens can't talk about because there's no words to describe sometimes some things that yet they're evolving in humanity as being babes, elementary, and teenagers, that there's no articulated words that they can come up with sometimes to talk about the hurts, the pain, and the struggles. So I amend you for that. And, uh, and sometimes when um, you don't want to be specific in details of any trauma that you've gone through in life, the best way is to articulate it in poetry. Some people will get it, some people won't, but the right people who are actually going through will understand because it will touch them in their spirit and soul. So that's the power of words. Um, at this moment, I did a little, I, I tend to just, um, as Philip says, a force of nature, I freestyle, free spirited. I want to take acknowledgement because I have a teen of my own who actually showed up. She's right there. Her name is Isabella. I call her my Beba. And at this time, I also want to acknowledge my dear friend, soul sister, Siamese twin, all of the above sister, Crystal, and um, who I've met in the beautiful community of Brockton, and her daughter, Selena. Um, ironically, another common ground is that our daughter's name end in A, Isabella mm -hmm. Selena. And uh, another common factor is that our children are biracial. I'm Hispanic, and my children are Hispanic black. She is white, are you? I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. She is more Dominican than me, no. She is like schooling me on my cultural roots. And her children are Hispanic white. So that's the beauty of diversity as I emphasized earlier. And you know, I like to bring humor in this. And um, I'm going to, I, I pulled up a poem because it was a discussion before we began that if you write poems, that's beautiful. But if you love a poem that has been written, that's even more beautiful because poetry has to continue on. And the only way that it does is by sharing other poets' writings. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, um, this is an anonymous poem. And then I'm going to go into, of course, I have to close out in the holiday season with my beloved own written poem. But All we'll right. pause on that one. So this one is to the teens and to continue to encourage. This is by an anonymous poet. It's not my poem. Be humble enough to realize you still have a lot to learn. Be ambitious enough to know you can be anything you want to be. Be easy enough on yourself to enjoy, to laugh, and to have fun. Be mature enough to take responsibility for what you do. Be proud enough to take care of your body, your mind, and your spirit. Be confident enough to see that you are who you are inside is more important than what you look like on the outside. Be wise enough to choose your friends carefully. Be absolutely sure that wherever you go, whatever you do, you are truly loved. Know that. Wow. And, and to the young ladies, the teens that are here, you are a precious teen, beautiful, vibrant, strong, and lean, like hormones up, down, and around. Yet you manage to come around. You are a precious teen, beautiful, vibrant, strong, and lean. Don't ever think you are not seen. Indeed, you are, because you are my precious, beloved teen. Love you, Isabella. I just wrote that right now mm. for the young ladies here. All righty, so I'm sharing openly, because this is what I get to do as hosting, right? My love. And um, that has come from heaven. And I articulated and managed to put it in a um, bilingual format. So sometimes we tend to call bilingual Spanish, you converse English, and you intertwine with Spanish. So I decided because Manuel shares a cultural rule. Again, I'm a Salvadorian Dominican. Manuel is from the Dominican Republic and it, it, close to where my father is from. And with that being said, he's definitely been sent from heaven up above, below, to someone like me, a perfect match. Aww. Things get made up there first before they manifest here. And um, with that, I am going to read to him, let him know that I'm, I articulated a poem, and I then am going to translate it in English. Manuel, yo te le traigo una poema, y yo quiero que tú vengas a parar aquí, porque yo te lo voy a leer. Manuel, I wrote you a poem, and I would like for you to come up here because I'm going to read it to you. Aww. 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 This is Manuel, my beloved fiance. Yes. Okay, so, okay. The title of it, and then I'm going to read it in English, is called My Love of Heaven. Okay? Mi amor de los cielos. Mi amor de los cielos. 
Veniste cuando no estaba esperando o buscando el amor. Un hombre con gran valor eres tú, mi amor de los cielos. Estuve adorando al Señor de las nubes, haciendo actos humanos sin pasando en, en pensando en mí, y Dios preparando a ti, para tirarle de los cielos como un rayo de luz directamente a mi alma y mi corazón. Mi amor de los cielos. No necesito tener razón porque, so, porque sé que eres la bendición de Dios. Tú y yo, yo y ti, somos unidos. Mi amor de los cielos. Aceptaré la propuesta de matrimonio. No puedo ver un momento pasar en mi vida sin ti. Ya Dios nos puso juntos en el camino de vida y esto es la realidad, que tú eres mi amor de los cielos. All right, so obviously there was some love and Spanish things going on in there, right? All right. <laughs> All right, so this is what I read to him. And uh, mi amor de los cielos in English is translated as my love of heaven. Okay? My love of heaven, you came when I wasn't waiting or looking for love. A man of with great value, it is you. My love of heaven, I was worshiping the man of the clouds, performing human acts and not thinking of myself, and God was preparing you. To pull him through from the heavens like a ray of light directly to my soul and to my heart. My love of heaven. I don't need to have a reason because I know you are the blessing of God. You and me, me and you, we are united. My love of heaven. I will accept the proposal of marriage of holy matrimony. I can't see a moment pass in my life without you. God already put us in each other's path in this walk of life. And this is the reality that you are my love of heaven. Aww. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, it is a holiday season. You know, tis the season to be jolly. Hope everyone has a joyous season. And if for some reason you are alone or isn't as the way you want it to be, the beauty of life is, is that every day you wake up, you have another day, and you have time to empower and build yourself. So thank you, everyone. Have a happy holiday season. And this is my Joshi, a community supporter, always engaged and involved, another young person in our community, aspiring. And he, too, will write a poem. He just don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to let Philip Pissarras come and ultimately close out. Thank you, Philip. Happy holidays. Love you dearly. This man rocks. So thank you all for coming on this um, pre-holiday, four days before Christmas. I know it's crazy, but we have a wonderful audience here. Um, I want to thank Paul Engel and the Brockton Library for giving us this wonderful space to voice our words. Most of all, to voice our truth. That's what this uh, poetry series is all about. Everyone has a voice. This is where we voice our truth, whether it be from the heart, from the soul, from the mind. Um, this is where it's said. Um, I want to thank Mark Lindy from Brockton Community Access for filming this and recording it for future. Um, Thank you to all the people on the open mic. You were wonderful. Uh, our future, Nicole. Yeah. Yeah. This is the voice of Brockton. This is our future. Um, we had Nicole and Gabrielle. So we want to hear their voices. Um, this is where we're going forward. Um, Allie, where are you? Oh. <laughs> my wonderful co-host and most importantly I want to thank everyone who came to listen we don't do that a lot especially with recent things going on but I hope that you got some positivity I hope that you got some hope from what you heard today and we will be back here in 2020 
the third week in Saturday, the third week um, in January. January. I think it's the 18th. Um, we have two wonderful poets, Jason Wright and Marcus Pierre, who will be our features. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa.